Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, FY 2021 Restrictive Housing Reform Implementation Assistance Program, hosted by the Bureau of Justice Assistance. At this time, I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Jessa Wilcox, Policy Advisor with the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Jessa. Hi, Daryl. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of you for attending today. Um, as Daryl said, my name is Jessa Wilcox, and I'm a policy advisor at the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Um, today's webinar, as Daryl said, is on BJA's fiscal year 2021 Restrictive Housing Reform Implementation Assistance Program. As many of you probably know, BJA has not funded work in this space for several years. So we are thrilled to be able to offer this solicitation in FY 2021 uh, for work on this important issue. So before we dive into the solicitation, just briefly, BJA, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, is part of the Office of Justice Programs at the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice is committing to advancing work that promotes civil rights, increases access to justice, supports crime victims, protects the public from crime and evolving threats, and builds trust between law enforcement and the community. Our goal at BJA is to provide leadership and services in grant administration and criminal justice policy development to support local, state, and tribal justice agencies achieve safer communities. And restrictive housing reform is a vital part of this work. So here's today's agenda. Uh, we've divided the content of this webinar into six separate sections. Uh, first, I'll just give you a brief overview of the program. Then I'll discuss the federal award information, a few things to note on the required deliverables, application requirements, and most importantly, how and when to apply. So let's go to the program overview. Um, and before we begin, let's just define our terms. For the purposes of this solicitation, we are defining restrictive housing as holding incarcerated people in a cell, either single or double celled, for at least 22 hours a day for 15 days or longer. Uh, there's lots of names for this practice. Um, sometimes you can hear it referred to as extended solitary confinement, uh, but we'll be referring to it as restrictive housing. And reforming the use of restrictive housing will lead to more humane systems of incarceration. Research over the past decade has shown that restrictive housing um, leads to detrimental impact on incarcerated people. Now, there's potential harmful effects on the correctional staff who work in restrictive housing units. And in general, there's just a lack of evidence that restrictive housing leads to increased safety within correctional facilities or within the community. What's hopeful is that now a diverse stakeholder, um, diverse group of stakeholders and leaders, legislators, correctional professionals, advocates, uh, believe in the need for reform around the use of restrictive housing. And in fact, there has been a lot of movement in the field. Um, Per policy, some correctional agencies will no longer hold specific vulnerable populations in restrictive housing. In practice, um, some correctional officers now have more tools in their toolbox to use instead of needing to rely solely on solitary confinement to help manage the facility. And recently, we've even seen several state legislators weighing in on the use of restrictive housing. So while there definitely seems to be a groundswell of acknowledgement of the importance of this issue and motivation to address it, um, there are still tens of thousands of people being held in restrictive housing. And we at BJA hear that agencies and facilities can use strategic support and assistance in how to implement reforms while maintaining the safety of their facilities and the support of their staff. So this leads us to the objectives of this program. Right there, there's three main ones. Uh, the first, of course, is to provide support and assistance to correctional agencies that are ready to implement meaningful reforms. Uh, the second is to create resources that will be made publicly available to agencies and facilities that are considering reforms. And third, uh, developing practices or models for correctional agencies to use to collect and analyze data to measure the impact of reforms. Uh, these are pretty broad objectives. Uh, BJA, we purposely do not wanna be too prescriptive with this solicitation. We want this to be led by subject experts and really responsive to the needs and voices from the field on what is needed and what is working. So some award information getting into the heart of this program. Um, BJA plans to make one award as a cooperative agreement up to $2.1 million over 30 months. 
And eligible applicants are technical assistance providers. This is a cooperative agreement solicitation for a technical assistance provider. Um, as you see in the solicitation, we broadly define this. Um, For-profit organizations other than small businesses, nonprofits having 501c3, nonprofits that don't have 501c3, um, institutions of higher education, public and state controlled institutions of higher education, small businesses, um, other. Uh, basically, you just have to be a technical assistance provider um, or capable of doing that work for the solicitation. And subrecipients are, of course, welcome. And there are no categories for the solicitation. So we have some required deliverables in the solicitation. BJA expects that the recipient of this award, award will use funds to first create a competitive, objective site selection process to select, to select correctional agencies to provide strategic support and assistance around implementing restrictive housing reform. And then once the applicant has begun working with the sites, BJA will require an implementation plan for each site that will incorporate policy, practice, and training reforms with a real focus on sustainability. Uh, we will require documentation of outcomes of any implementation efforts to be publicly shared to advance the field. We are looking for a national convening of selected sites, stakeholders, and correctional leaders. In the solicitation, we do not specify in-person or virtual, so free, feel free to discuss this in your application, uh, which you plan to do and why. Next, identification and documentation of the steps needed to promote and institutionalize broad agency and facility staff buy-in for reform. Tools and resources to be used by other agencies and facilities that are beginning to implement reform. And finally, practices or models for correctional agencies to use on collecting or analyzing data to measure the impact of reforms. So moving on to section four, the application requirements. We just want to make note of several requirements included in the solicitation. Starting on page seven, you will find all of the application requirements. Um, please note to be even considered for funding, each application must include a project abstract, a program narrative, and the program narrative will include a description of the issue, um, where the applicant must demonstrate a thorough understanding of the issue and any potential challenges of implementing reforms within a correctional setting, project design and implementation. Um, and for this part, please include a detailed discussion of the level of engagement you will have with the selected sites and even how many sites you propose to assist. Um, again, we've left this broad and up to the app applicants to really uh, show, you know, what you think is the best use of federal funds for this program. Of course, capabilities and competencies for doing this work and a plan for collecting the data required for the solicitation's performance measures. An applicant must also include a budget detail worksheet and budget narrative, timeline task plan, um, proposed subrecipients, which at the end of this solicitation, there's an appendix that you can upload, resumes of key personnel, and two or three work product examples. This could be fact sheets, uh, research briefs, uh, links to webinars, um, TTA final reports, to so something that demonstrates to the peer reviewers that you are capable of doing this type of work. And of course, when peer reviewers review your applications, different weight is given to each section of the narrative and supporting materials. So please note the different weights on this slide, specifically that 40% of the total score will come from project design and implementation. And we are speeding through this. We've reached our last section, how and when to apply. Um, some additional information here that might be useful. Each individual program solicitation outlines all elements of the application in a section that's called application and submission information. Uh, there's also a checklist at the end of the solicitation, starting on page 12, that we recommend you use to ensure that you've included all of the required items. So as you may have heard by now, OJP has switched from our old grants management system to the new Just Grant system for application submission and awards management. Uh, we think that Just Grants offer several submission enhancements, including a streamlined end-to-end -end process, which enables applicants and grantees to move seamlessly through the full grants management lifecycle. It also gives applicants and award recipients new ways to manage their own entity information and that of other users in the system. And it allows for new roles, like a new entity administrator role in Just Grants, 
that is assigned to the user who created the SAM.gov account. This system does require a longer lead time than in the past, so please plan in advance when you're thinking about when you're gonna submit your application. Uh, specifically, there's now a two-step process. In step one of the process, applicants must submit an SF-424 and an SF-LLL at grants.gov. And for this solicitation, the deadline to complete this step is August 10th, 2021. And you must complete the stage before you can complete step two. Um, so just to be very clear, if you miss this deadline, you will not be able to apply for this, this solicitation. Uh, and then step two of the process, you will submit your full application, including all attachments, and that's at justicegrants.usdoj.gov. And the due date for this is August 24th, 2021. So we realize this is a new process, right, during uh, application season. So we wanna make it as easy as possible and as smooth as easy to apply. So one key resource that we have is the application mechanics of e-learning videos. And by viewing these e-learning videos, job aids, DOJ application checklists, and other resources, you'll have all the information you need to successfully navigate the mechanics of submitting an application. Uh, there are live links on this slide, and I think Tammy just put some in the chat. And the, um, of course, this presentation will be posted on BJA's FY21 funding opportunity page for you always uh, to go return to. This slide includes the live link to the DOJ application submission checklist. And Tammy, thank you again for putting it in the chat. This checklist includes how to prepare to apply, completing the abbreviated application in grants.gov, entity onboarding and just grants access, completing, reviewing, certifying, submitting your application in just grants, and other helpful user tips. And here we've just included some additional resources you might consider accessing as you work through your application. Um, there's recording and slide decks from previous webinars. You can refer to the Just Grants training application submission page for additional information and training on the application submission process. And you can bookmark the Just Grants training page for any updates. Uh, of course, if you do have questions, um, we have lots of technical assistance available to help you. Um, for questions around the grants.gov, there is the grants.gov customer, and this is the step one, August 10th due date. There's the grants.gov customer support hotline, uh, 800-518-4726 or 606-545-5035. Um, there's the support webpage, there's the support at grants.gov email address, and this operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, except on federal holidays. For assistance with submitting the full application to Just Grants, um, contact the Just Grants service desk. It's 833-872-5175, or there's the email address right there, justgrants.support at usdoj.gov. And this service desk operates from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday, and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, Sunday, and federal holidays. And then, of course, if there's assistance with any unforeseen technical issues beyond your control that prevent you from submitting your application or any questions about other requirements, contact the National Criminal Justice Reference Service, NCJRS, and the contact information is at the bottom of this slide. Uh, their hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, and 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the solicitation close date. Um, and just here's a few ways to stay connected. Make sure you're aware of what's happening with BJA and all other relevant funding opportunities. I think we have one more slide about online resources. Um, of course, you'll be able to access this once this presentation has been posted. Um, and then finally, here's a link directly to the solicitation. And just another reminder of the application due dates, grants.gov, a little bit under two weeks right from today, 8-10-2021. And then Just Grants is, the application is due in Just Grants August 24th, 2021. Um, so we just sped through a lot. I'm more than happy to stick around and answer any questions you have about today's webinar, the solicitation, or this project. Um, so please just put them in the chat and I'll be happy to respond. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jess. And just a reminder, as mentioned several times, the PowerPoint recording uh, will be posted to, and the transcript will be posted to the BJ website in approximately five, 10 business days. 
Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, and if you do have a question, the bottom right hand side of your screen, there's three dots, click that. And then there, the Q&A box, you can enter that in and we'll just go through them as they come in in order here. Just so there is one in the queue currently. A particular person is now working for the North Carolina DOP. They're attempting to work on getting the state accredited by ACA, which of which large part is managing restrictive housing. Uh, there's much work to be done. Do you believe that the state would be a good candidate to partner with a technical assistance provider? So um, a correctional agency wouldn't come in as a subrecipient, but um, they would definitely be a great candidate to apply under the competitive objective site selection process that the technical assistance provider is going to set up. So once BJA chooses the technical assistance provider, this uh, organization or groups of organization will then set up um, like kind of a competition to receive the TA. Um, so definitely state agencies are perfect uh, candidates for that. Thank you for your question. There's, this is only for one award, correct? Yes, one award, um, but there can be sub recipients, of course. Is there a specific time during the project when the national convening event should occur? Nope, uh, we are leaving that up to the applicants to propose, um, and you can discuss it if you want in your narrative, why, you know, when and why you think that would be the best time uh, during this project period to bring people together. While we're waiting for any others to come in, uh, just highlighting the slide again, if you do have questions, either on the grants.gov, just grants, or through the AJP Response Center, contact information is listed here. For the qualified applicant, does the organization have to be an existing TTA provider? Uh, nope, they uh, do not. Um, you know, the award is to provide strategic support and assistance, but they don't have to be a current TA provider. Any other questions? Um, please do enter those in. We'll be sure to get to them today. And I'll also put this resources for the funding opportunity slide up for those um, individuals that may want to research other items here. Grant Funding Resource Center. Grants Financial Guide is an excellent resource uh, as well. It seems we have another question. A, a bit of confusion. Does the application need to come from the state or the technical assistance provider themselves? The application to BJA um, and the person that will be in receipt of the $2.1 million award is from a technical assistance provider. And then they will run an objective competition um, process to determine who, which states, which agencies, which correct, correctional agencies they will work with. Seems to be all in the queue at this time, Jessa. Hang on another minute or so. Sure, of course. And I'll highlight this as well, the link here to the full solicitation, which is on the BJA website, and the two important dates, both grants.gov, August 10th by 11.59 p.m., and then just grants at 8.24, 11.59 p.m. And as mentioned, obviously try to get them in as soon as possible, at least two 48 hours prior to the due date, take into consideration any technical glitches that may occur. How will states be made aware of the opportunity to apply to the technical assistance provider that's awarded this? That will be a part of the responsibility of the technical assistance provider to publicize and promote it and make sure that um, any interested parties know about it, know how to apply, know what the technical assistance will look like. Seems to be all that's in the queue at this time still, Jessa. Okay, thanks, so. And just highlighting once again to the uh, Just Grants application resources, since it is a new system this year, a lot of questions and things to get through. So these e-learning videos are a wonderful resource to go ahead and access on different steps of the process on getting ready to apply, initiating your application, um, 
budget detail forms, and then even post submission what you need to do and have in order. So uh, these are wonderful resources to take a look at as far as the just grant submission process is concerned. What seems to be it at this time? Is there a limit to the work products that can be included? Um, there is not a limit. I think in the solicitation, we say two to three, um, but there is no limit. And then just another question, where, where can one find the SF424 form? I think that should be on grants.gov, trying to pull it up. I don't know, Tammy or Daryl, if you have it. Yeah, handy. that is, that is okay. correct. Just uh, grants.gov. Can access that form as well as the LLL, the lobbying form that's both required for submission. And if you do have any questions, uh, you know, or additional assistance on those, you can contact their uh, grants.gov support desk here. Uh, but you'll be able to access those directly from that site. And then just another question on the copy of the slides will be made available, as mentioned, uh, slides, PowerPoint, and the transcript for today on the BJ website within their funding uh, topical area tab. Along with the full solicitation at this URL, this PDF. And it was just entered in a chat on the actual URL where this will be posted in the funding webinars tab. And just reiterating, just so it was mentioned before, is once this is awarded, it will be up to the awardee, the technical assistance provider, to do the outreach. Yes. Okay. That's correct. And then, it just generally, is there an award schedule um, on the next, you know, steps on when the program will commence? Um, this will uh, commence um, on or about October 1st, 2021. Seems to be on the queue at this time. Okay, with that, Jess, I don't know if there's anything else in closing to mention. No, I just want to thank all of the attendees today and to thank you, Daryl and Jimmy. Yeah, so on behalf of the Bureau of Justice Assistance and our panelists, we want to thank you for joining today's webinar. That's why in today's presentation.